HMS Renown, not the bow cruiser, though she's certainly the more famous one, was a second-class battleship of the late 19th century. For context, though I'll go into this later in more depth, a second-class battleship can generally just be looked at as slightly smaller, less armored, and with less powerful weaponry compared to a first-class battleship. That doesn't make her a bow cruiser, but that will become relevant later on in the video. Because the most famous association for Renown is with Jackie Fisher. Considering he's the one who pushed for her design, and the one most closely associated with her service history. Fundamentally, an enlargement and improvement on the preceding Centurion class, Renown was something of a compromise from the start. In, honestly, classic fashion, a small ship born out of a desire to have something because the preferred ships couldn't be built quickly enough. In this case, the original plan for 1892 had been to build three Majestic-class battleships, which will get their own video at some point, armed with a new 12-inch gun. These ships, and that gun, were quite a departure from previous designs, and the Royal Navy had some issues getting the gun ready, so they needed to get something done to keep dockyard workers busy. The easiest way to do that was to, it's simplifying things a lot here, but basically make a smaller ship that you could build quicker while still building two of the Majestic class once the guns were ready. That said, Renown is something of a unicorn. Not only did she only exist because of circumstances related to the ships the Royal Navy actually wanted to build, her design was a bunch of compromises. Some really fancy for the time features, but also a lot of holdover from Centurion that just was improved a little bit. I doubt Jackie Fisher was complaining, though, considering he wanted to build smaller ships. Even relatively low-ranked as he was at the time, third Sea Lord as opposed to first Sea Lord, Fisher was still influencing things. He wanted a ship with, to quote, the lightest practicable big gun and the heaviest secondary gun as the ideal battleship armament. That quote, and most of the information in this video, is taken from R.A. Burt's excellent overview on early British pre-dreadnoughts. In some regards, you can already see Fisher's later flirtation with big armored cruisers here. At any rate, his influence didn't quite go as far as he would have wanted. Recurring theme, really. As Fisher wanted to replace the other two Majestics with repeat renowns up to a class of six of the things. Also kind of a recurring theme with Fisher. Of course, the Royal Navy had an equally common habit of looking at him and going, You what, mate? and promptly rejected that theory. Renown herself, though, compared well with foreign battleships in protection, speed, and secondary firepower, but her 10-inch gun was viewed as too light for battle fleet work. Even the Majestic's 12-inch guns were a lighter weapon than standard, though again, we'll get into that, advances in technology helped it more than you would think. Also, by this point, second-class battleships were considered a bit of an expensive luxury, even for the Royal Navy, which was never really short on money, for leading cruiser squadrons. Again, early shades of battle cruisers here, though second-class battleships are definitely not the same thing. That said, due to conflicts over the design, especially the armor, Renown would take... Well, the funny thing is, they started her because they wanted to get something out while the Majestics were getting their guns sorted, Renown took four years to complete. It took about 30 months on average for the larger Majestics. I suppose if your goal is to keep a dockyard working, that's one way to do it. Doubt the Royal Navy was very happy that their stopgap ship took longer than the ship it was intended to replace on the construction docket, though. Anywho, the completed HMS Renown would be a fine-looking ship, if one likes the way pre-dreadnoughts look and performed well once she was in the water. She displaced around 12,000 tons, was armed with four 10-inch guns in the still relatively new pre-dreadnought layout, 
and a heavy broadside of 10 6-inch guns for her secondaries, as well as 8 12-pounder guns that would become standard for anti-torpedo boat work, all the way up to Dreadnought herself. 12 3-pounders and 5 torpedo tubes rounded out her armament. Initially completed with open-backed turrets, Renown was actually intended to have fully armored turrets. This was, in of itself, still a relatively new concept at the time. Indeed, her gun houses were called a barbette in comparison to early circular turrets at this time, and had issues with weight management that precluded the original design of fully enclosed turrets. It wouldn't be until the early 20th century, when she was very much obsolete, that backs would be fitted to those turrets. That said, her heavy focus on 6-inch guns was an early indication of how pre-dreadnought design would go, focusing on lots of lighter weapons to fire rapid, medium-caliber broadsides. The goal there to be damage the relatively unarmored portions on enemy ships. This layout would endure right up until Dreadnought, with some variations depending on class or nation. As for the armor that was such a problem, she used Harvey Steel, another new innovation at the time, which I'll get into whenever I do a video on steel work, that would have a sloping armor deck behind the main belt. While her armor was relatively light in absolute thickness, these innovations made her tougher than the raw statistics, 8 inches at her thickest, would indicate. Though she did have a lesser percentage of armor than other battleships, even acknowledging the improvement in armor design, though again, the improvement in technology balanced this out. Rounding off technical details, Renown could go roughly 7 to 9, 17 to 19 knots on a power plant rated for 10,000 shaft horsepower. She was intended for 17 knots, but, as is often the case, the power plant could put out more power than was intended and push the ship a bit faster. For the time, she was actually pretty sprightly, though this would not last long, especially in light of her protracted construction period. Cruiser speed, even in relatively slower armored cruisers, would far surpass Renown in relatively short order. Kind of made it difficult to perform her stated goal of cruiser squadron flagship, Though you can see the early hints of where Fisher was going here, at least when you take into account where he would eventually end up with battle cruisers. Also, in common with many ships of the time, she had her two funnels mounted side by side, which gives a somewhat interesting silhouette to more modern observers. Now, you may be wondering why I'm focusing so much on the design background and technical details here. That's because Renown has an honestly kind of boring service career, like she really did not do much. She spent a couple years as flagship of the North American and West Indies stations, with Fisher in command. Nothing really happened there, other than starting Fisher's fascination with the ship in actual service, continuing from his influence in her design. And after a short refit when she was transferred to flagship of the Mediterranean fleet, she served a couple years there doing more or less the exact same thing. Because, again, she was under Fisher, who by this point was really quite enamored of her. There's a reason why my video earlier on Royal Yachts called renowned Jackie Fisher's party boat, and it's her service in the Mediterranean that really does it. For example, she was refit to Fisher specifications to be better suited for social events, including a possibly true story of Fisher having the flash plates of the 10-inch guns removed because they, quote, interfered with ladies' shoes. According to Burt, there is photographic evidence of them actually being removed at this point. Whether that was for the ladies' shoes or some other reason... He doesn't say, but considering Fisher's personality, I can 100% believe he would actually do that. Because he seemed very fond of using Renown for social events, likely due to her relative good looks and suitability for that task, in comparison to actual warfare by this point. Also, as mentioned in that previous video, he would not be the only one to do this. 
In late 1902, Renown would be detached and refit for use as a giant royal yacht for a tour of India. This is where she picked up the nickname Battleship Yacht, though it wouldn't be until later on that she got the refit that would really cement that. Because after that tour of India, she went back to the Mediterranean for a few months, and then got placed in reserve until 1905. At which point she would be dragged back out, even more heavily refit, this is the one I'm talking about. All of her secondary battery was removed to increase cabin space, and those guns were never returned. She would continue in that role until 1909, when she was fully taken out of service for use as a Stoker's training ship. At least that role was more fitting a warship. By this point, she was thoroughly obsolete and would be sold for scrap in 1914, just barely missing the start of the Great War. Frankly, Renown was, as such, a ship with a boring career best summed up as socialite's favorite battleship or, again, Jackie Fisher's party boat. Her influence in layer design comes largely from shaping Fisher's proto-battlecruiser ideal, and from certain aspects, her armor, her guns, her admittedly high for when she was designed speed. Those features were revolutionary when she was launched, though they were quickly outdated. Combat service? Nope, she never saw battle. Still, though, Renown is an interesting ship that was honestly let down by her construction time, rendering her ill-suited to her original role. 